it comes through. You know, you you, you see different things coming through. Hamlet, the, the revenge tragedy. Um, how do kings come about? Because technically, shouldn't Hamlet be king because he's the son? So again, that's a playing on people's understanding of what politics is and what monarchy should be. Uh, so we also, you, have Richard, get, we also have Richard the second too, because Richard I mean, the second, be, be, yeah, be, yeah, I was because, saving that till last. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry about that. Um, but, um, no, but, no, I no wanna, but I did want to, but I did want to ask um, another question because um, so, so I want to back up to, 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 to how you mentioned that there were um, four major playwrights in London at that time. Mm. So, you know, so so obviously, you know, in in modern times, you know, when when we think when we think of English drama, we immediately default to Shakespeare, and you know, because he's because he's the prime example of what English theater is. But in, you know, but we always but we tend to forget that there were other other writers out there, like Kit Marlowe, for instance, who wrote yes. you know, Drew of Malta, Doctor Faustus, um, Ben Johnson. Um, Johnson uh, he wrote Volpone, didn't he? Yes. Yes, and so then ben and then Johnson, you got, yeah. And the and, and 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 then you got Robert Greene. So so but 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 in my you know but in my mind I'm thinking I mean these guys you know, you know these guys wrote some you know some equally good plays and I'm mm -hmm. and I'm fairly certain that they that they were just as you know you know just as incisive and just as political in their you know in their views as Shakespeare was. So why is it mm. that so why is it that we don't really put too much stock or hear too much from you know from these other three like we do with with shakespeare because i'm because i'm assuming jew of malta you know was you know was just as controversial as say othello for mm. instance so it's that's a really interesting question i think at the time if you look at i mean ben johnson um he was very controversial and became very uh um uh got into a lot of trouble for some of the things that he he was writing and some of the plays he was putting on he did go to cambridge so he was one of the quote unquote elite um he was a, a war hero he he did actually fight on the continent and uh he did um he did like a drink he did like a scuffle but we've got evidence that that says that that shakespeare wasn't he wasn't a big drinker. He wasn't a big uh, philanderist. He wasn't a big kind of party animal. Apparently, by all accounts, he was very boring. Yeah. So he, yeah, he's what we would call white bread. You know, yeah, vanilla. Yeah, exactly. He would just you know sit in his room and write poetry. You know, like a kind of very sad teenage boy. Um, but we've got Kit Marlowe being very flashy, being very uh, you know, there's, there's some people that, that, that says he he was gay or at least bi, and he's very kind of open and flamboyant. And he was uh, a spy, and, wasn't he? And a spy. Yeah. yeah. The original James Bond, you know, 001, licensed to thrill, you know, just so whipped up controversy. And what we find is that Shakespeare didn't. He didn't whip up controversy. He was quiet. We don't hear about him. We get Robert Greene writing kind of big diatribes against Shakespeare. We get Ben Johnson being very, very controversial. We get Kit Marlowe being very, very controversial. And we get Shakespeare not. And I think it's because, and it's to kind of answer your kind of, uh, your, your, your question, I'm, I'm fumbling around a bit. I think it's because he wasn't controversial at the time. He just wrote the plays um you know uh, i think ben johnson converted to catholicism um he um was a brawler as well i think i read that he was uh, arrested because he was uh, he, he beat a man to death in a drunken stupor you know which is not good for one's career if you if you if, if you know what i mean um, yeah kind of like, like with the guy roman polanski for instance you know, exactly you know or you know there's controversial figures uh what's that name of that rapper oh r kelly or, or chris brown you know it's not good for your career yeah um, so you, you get also robert johnson uh, sorry not robert johnson he's a blues guy ben johnson converting to catholicism in a time of, of protestantism not really kind of de rigueur um so you've got this very vanilla guy in the middle of all this 
just writing plays, trying to keep up with people around him, but seemingly avoiding all controversy. You don't see him appear in the name of courtrooms. You don't see him being arrested for anything. There was, of course, questions about him, but we don't see any scandal attached to him. And I think the only scandal that people kind of uh, uh, ascribe to Shakespeare is the fact that when he and his wife married, their daughter was born three months later. And that's the only kind of scandal that we can find that uh, it was a shotgun wedding. And by keeping his nose clean, we get that survival. Uh, and, and that, I think, um, is why he has, has kind of lasted so long, whereas the others kind of haven't. I mean, don't get me wrong. You've got Faustus. is a fantastic player. Love it. And you've got Friar Bungay from Robert Green, which, which is a hoot. It's, it's, it's really quite funny. Uh, and, and some of Ben Johnson's works as well. But they don't have the sticking power. Um, they just don't seem to have had the same impact. And whether it's because Shakespeare was just a good boy and got his head down and just did his homework, maybe that's the case. Yeah, so you didn't rock the boat too much. No, exactly. I mean, we, we've 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 kind of skirted around it a, a, a lot, but the, the the only time where we get close to that scandal and that oh crikey moment is the delightful uh, Robert Devereux, which we uh, we've we've mentioned a few times. Uh, and Robert Devereux, <laughs> we're, fi we're finally getting to it. <laughs> here we go. We've we've teased enough. We've we've done enough spoilers, enough Easter eggs. Um, you know, uh, uh, Robert Devereux, the the Earl of Essex, um, who, if you look into him, he was. Uh, there's a character in uh, British comedy cycles called Tim Nice but Dim. Um, who was highly educated, private school boy, but was thick as two short planks. And this, this Essex was a lot of bluster, a lot of bravado, and, and not much going on upstairs. Um, he performed, quote-unquote, military service, but wasn't that in, uh, the, the effect, uh, uh, very effectual. Because he was um, in Ireland, didn't it? Wasn't he? That was the big controversy. He okay. basically blagged his way into being um, Lord Lieutenant of Ireland. He talked himself into it. Uh, it was in the middle of the Nine Years' War, and no one had been successful, but he convinced everybody that he was the guy that was going to be successful. Spoiler alert, he wasn't. So basically and he pulled a bojo. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He convinced everybody. I have no idea how. And he needed more force to, to go and defeat the Irish. Managed somehow to get 16,000 troops to end the rebellion. And the, the Queen wished him well on her, on her way. And with 16,000 Englishmen, you know, well trained professional soldiers. Even an idiot could have just pointed them at the enemy and said, go on, and you should have won. But what he did was he had better ideas. He was convinced that he knew how to bring peace to Ireland. And it wasn't by defeating the rebellion in an open battle and therefore quashing it beyond all recognition. Now, what he decided to do was little inconclusive kind of battles here, there and everywhere fortifications and at the end he just ran out of money did nothing and ended up losing loads of battles and he tried to create a truce with the the uh the leader and ended up losing terms it was actually detrimental terms and there's a lovely quote that that the queen is supposed to said to him if I uh, if I wanted to abandon Ireland, I wouldn't have sent you there. It would have just happened. So he kind of came back, and what he did was to kind of, before he came back, he knighted everybody under the name and authority of the Queen. 
So anyone that he thought was okay, he would knight. And by the end of his time in Ireland, it's said that more than half knights in England were knighted by him. So sort of like if Richard Sunak decided to just make you know make all of his mates lords without having to go through through the king, right? Yeah, exactly. And but thing is, what he believed was if he had loads of knights on his side, he would become really powerful because he was the god of these knights. Now he wasn't aiming to try to be king, was he? Not like, at he all. Just, Not he was at just all. on a huge power trip. He was on a huge power trip. So he came back. I mean, the the, the lovely kind of uh, the rebels, the Irish rebels in typical Irish humor said that the only time he ever drew his sword was to knight one of his mates. Which I think is quite I, nice. Actually. Yeah, I remember it's hearing nice. that. <laughs> yeah, it's quite nice. But then uh, again, he becomes like chancellor of the University of Dublin. It's like, what are you doing? Again, it's that class system. You know, you, you have enough power, influence and money. You can kind of do what you want, really. But the way where he comes into the Shakespeare story was near the end of, of Queen Elizabeth's life. And um, she is she's old. She's she's not very well. She's on a deathbed kind of thing. And he decides this is the perfect time to form a coup. And he wants to kind of form a coup and overthrow her and, uh, you know, not become king himself, but kind of try to uh, subvert the government. And to do this, what he does, one of the things is he remembers that Richard II, the Shakespeare play, talks about an aging monarch and the shift of power. So he pays Shakespeare's company I think it's 40 guineas over their normal fee to put Richard the second on and like he course, really he really really wanted that play to be put on if he's exactly working out that much money and and I think that was one of the saving graces for Shakespeare because as a businessman if someone goes I'm going to give you 40 guineas over your usual play put on that play okay you don't ask do you, you just go okay we'll put on that play no problem and it was Essex's hope that the people would see the play and that would incite them into rebellion. Turns out it didn't. Only 300 people turned up for his, his rebellion and he was arrested and then executed for treason. This is Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex, not, not Shakespeare. All right. Uh, and one of the evidence that the, that the Crown used was that Shakespeare's company was summoned to court to play Richard II. So they had to go into the Queen's palace and do the play. And at the end, the Queen went, oh, that's quite a nice play. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. Even though in her, she, she's quoted as saying herself that she is Richard II. She actually, the, the, there's a kind of quotation that she is that she says that she's like Richard II, which kind of plays into what she was doing. But I think she likes Shakespeare. I mean, he makes reference to her in some of the plays. There's the Oberon talks of a fair vestal thrown by the West. That's supposed to be Elizabeth. Um, there's other bits and pieces where he mentions fairy queens. That's supposed to be Elizabeth. So he has a lot of uh, time from Elizabeth. So but, I think, she... but 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 to go back to to, to Devereux, I mean I, I mean there I mean there were a lot of episodes where Devereux you know was just being insubordinate to the Queen, wasn't? Um, yes, I, I remember there was wasn't there an episode where they were in council and he turned his back on her and 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 she boxed him in the ear, you know, to, to try to <laughs> reprimand him, and then and and did he draw his or did he or did he almost draw a sword on her as a result? So. I don't know about the boxing of the year, but it wouldn't put me, uh, I wouldn't surprise me. Um, he just seems to be, from what I know of him, just an absolute douche. He seems to be just always trying to get one over, thinking he's more important. And I think that's kind of where we go. Um, I do like the idea of him being boxed in the ears by the Queen, though. I think that's quite quite nice i mean because he is a hot he is a hot i mean he's basically you know percy from henry you know henry the fourth you know <laughs> in you know, you know just walking around acting you know too big for his britches and 
the queen kind of has to like you know knock him down a peg and he's like well who the hell are you to do that but i mean, well, I mean but, family, but it is against they? were they first cousins or first cousins yeah, I think removed so. or something i think so yeah but i mean you know, you know but just the fact that he drew a sword against the queen that i mean that i mean i mean that that's an act of treason isn't it yeah he should have been like executed straight away um you know lack of respect um oh there we go i've just found it on my notes uh, uh during a heated privy council debate the queen cuffed an insolent essex around the head prompting him to draw his sword on there so yeah well, there we go <laughs> there we go um oh he took part in drake's armada as well crikey so he's always there or thereabouts but finally got his comeuppance and lost his head yeah because um because didn't she also take away his license because he had a license for was it trading wine or something and and that made up a, a substantial amount of his income Ah, uh, i don't know that one actually that's that's i mean there's there's some aspects of this history that just i'm not too familiar i'm i'm familiar with a lot of it but there's some of the interesting stories i'm not fully into but i wouldn't yeah. put it past him there's a lot of corruption in that era there's a lot of kind of um the i know that the the privateer license which gave eventually birth to the the piracy the great pirates of the caribbean that we know um comes from uh yeah. queen elizabeth you got walter raleigh francis drake um, yeah, i mean Ra raleigh i mean the capital of north carolina my state is named after sir walter raleigh so is it really yeah yeah oh. i mean rem I'm, i remember remember we, and the lost colony um is off the coast and you know that's the, the yeah that's the famous incident of um of virginia dear the first woman born in the americas but um but mm. what i was gonna but what, what i was getting at is that um you know with all these you know me mentioning all these incidents it's i it, mean it's not like it's not like devro just decides one day i'm i feel like yeah. i'm going to go and you know try to overthrow the queen it's the fact that you have all these you know all, you know all these you know I, I guess you could say isolated episodes kind of like linked together where the, the, signs, the signs were there the signs yeah. were there that he had no i think being so close to the queen in in, in familial terms uh when we said before that there's loads of names of families that just seem to be ever present in the royal court um i think he's related to the Boleyns. i think i think it's his grandmother is a Boleyn, which mm -hmm. makes him related to to elizabeth herself so you get this kind of duty that oh I, I can do what i want because i'm related to the queen uh and at, at the time again we go back to the politics the the queen's uh has that that right that the parliament is a very strange being parliament seems to be at the king or queen's whim the king or yeah. queen decides what they want to do and then parliament makes it happen with no with no kind of um debate or comeback and then yeah it doesn't it doesn't be yeah, it doesn't become that um the independent force until after the Civil War. Or that's, the restoration. that's the changing power of that of that monarchy yeah. after Charles the First. So yeah. basically, you, you've got this kind of uh, people in the Privy Council who give the Queen advice, uh, and then she will go right. Okay, I want to enact this law, and they will pass that law, and it's a kind of uh, sort of false democracy, really, because all the people in the houses of parliament were rich you know dare i say it white male landowners and they're of course going to perpetuate their own claims um so it's Devereux seems to be uh, a kind of person who likes that sense of power likes that kind of um uh, money likes to be able to do what he wants and doesn't really have a lot of respect for other people um and has this belief that his power gives him uh status he walks into the the to the the uh, army to go and take over ireland and has no idea what he's doing literally has no idea even the queen's telling him right all you gotta do is meet them in a pitch battle and you will win and he goes no no i know what i'm doing so it's just this kind of farcical kind of machismo kind of yeah yeah just this incident after incident and then this seems to be the last straw that he tries to whip up a kind of coup d'etat and uh fails um so uh, 
so 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 right now um we're we're getting um over an hour so i i do want to go ahead and um just draw this to a close um but uh but i do but i will say this um i do want to do a part two of this discussion because i think i think you you and i can both agree we have we've barely scratched the surface uh, of this conversation and um and, and 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 really so 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 for part two what i really um what i really want to get at um because um and and and, I, and I've been hoping to discuss it um, today's episode, but we didn't get there. Um, but I, I I do want to discuss you, you know you know you know these plays as um you, you know can we see them as cautionary tales or as political manuals because mm. because it's it's because around that time that's when you're starting to see you know works like Machiavelli's The Prince talking about you know what does it mean to be you know what does it mean to be a monarch and not to mention too with like i mentioned before with the um, advent of the printing price you're getting a proliferation of you know of, of classical works by you know by seneca and cicero which talk about statecraft and what does it mean to be a statesman so 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 i feel like i, I feel like that in itself could be you know an entirely new episode and uh, honestly claire i think i i think we could do like what six parts to this discussion really <laughs> yeah we'll do I, a sequel then we'll do a prequel <laughs> exactly exactly so um so nor so so normally i um no, normally i i ask my guests what their favorite movies or tv shows are at the end of the conversation but Ooh. because but because um but because you know this is a conversation that we're going to care continue later on we'll mm. probably save that for when we actually get to the true end of the conversation and not today <laughs> um but i just want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this episode and we will return with a part two very soon and we'll catch you on the flip side.